drafting worldwide, wide, wide. Welcome back to the Revit Garage Project. In the last video, we went through and placed this view, our typical wall section, in the floor plan with a section, cut the section there, and then we brought the view into our newly created title block, A300 typical wall section, and then we adjusted the scale accordingly to fit on this sheet. Now that we have everything set up for this, we can go through and start adding some detail to the actual drawing or the actual view for this. So in my project browser, I scroll to find typical wall section, double click that, it'll take us to that view, and now we can start creating some actual views. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come over or down to these commands here. I'm going to change my detail level to fine. And I'll go ahead and save the project. And that's going to do some things for me right off the bat. It's going to give me a little bit better look at what's going on here. And then it's also going to add all the content in here as I zoom in. So to get started, I'm going to, first of all, pay attention that this is the outside. I want to make a little cove here that's filled in with this parge material, or this concrete. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to annotate. And I'm going to look for detail line. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to do a filled region. And whenever I click on, so again, that was annotate, region, filled region, that's going to bring up my sketch tools. And I'm just going to simply draw a cove in here, like this. And then I'm going to complete that. Whenever I do this, I need to remember that this is a region, which means that it's an enclosed area. I'm going to complete that with lines. So I drew an arc and then a line, a line. And I'm going to, instead of it being invisible lines, I'm going to use thin lines for the line type. And then over here, instead of it being filled region diagonal crosshatch, I'm going to see if I can find one for concrete, which I can't. So I'm going to edit type. I'm going to duplicate, and I'm going to say concrete. And the, we're going to build this cove out of the same material as the parge. And then in this type properties, I have the duplicate concrete foreground fill pattern. And I can click on this, click on that little button, and then I can choose concrete. Say OK, OK, and green check mark and now you can see that it filled that in with concrete so I'm going to need to edit this boundary so just select this edit boundary I'm going to click on that line specifically and change it from invisible line to thin line I thought I got that the first time or actually I want to make it a little bit thicker to match this line so let's try a medium line hit that and now you can see that there's that cove there. So it's basically just building out concrete so that any water that comes down here, instead of sitting here and trying to work its way back into the foundation, it's going to be shed out here. So out here, we're going to add footing drains. And I don't think I would be going through all this trouble for just a garage, but I'm going to show you a typical wall section, how I would do it for a residence and create a waterproof basement. So keep in mind that some of this would probably be overkill for a garage, but I want you to learn the aspects of doing it for a residence. I think that's more important. And while we're in here, we can do that. So I'm going to use product called Forma Drain, which is a long, comes in long 10 foot sections. And I'm going to go to my detail line and I'm going to draw a section view of that, what that looks like. And basically what it ends up being is 
something that looks like this. So it's a tube that is hollow in the middle and it has two different sections to it. And we're going to have that on the outside of the wall and we're going to have it on the inside of the wall. It's the way that this actually works and I, I can mirror this and just grab that and choose mirror access and I'll mirror it over there. So these are rigid plastic that basically gets staked in place and then this concrete in here gets poured to the top of each of these. So you can buy these in different heights, different configurations, corners, tees, uh, ones that have outlets in them for your drainage system, things like that. So that brings me to the next thing. So now I have my um, my former drain and this will be a radon vent as well. I am going to and again or this one will be the one on the interior is typically radon vent and I don't think I would need to do this for a garage but um, we're gonna consider this to be living space so I'm just going to once again detail line I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to copy that line down four inches and that's going to represent my drain actually I'm going to move this up two inches put this in the center of that to look a little bit better I don't want to move that one down those two got attached to each other for some reason just move that out move it up two and then slide it back connect there. So this is going to be my radon vent and this one right here. I could probably do that one to a two inch diameter if I need to. I'm going to mirror this to the other side and this is going to be my actual drain for draining this foundation and footing. So to terminate this, to show that this is actually a pipe what I can do is, again, detail line. I'm going to do that first. And then I'm going to draw an ellipse. So let's see if I have an ellipse on here. And I'll make it do that. And then I'm going to grab the end of it. And I'm going to bring it down. I want it to be half the size, like that. Just grabbing those grips and moving them and I'm going to do that and then I'm going to copy this from there to there I'm going to erase that line that I put in there to start and then I'm going to attempt to trim this so I'll use the split element tool and I'll split it right there and right there and then I'll just delete that part. I think I'll delete the other part. I think it'll like that part right there. And that is the symbol that we use to show that that is a pipe and it's continuing on out past here. And once I have that done, actually I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to copy this or mirror this over to the other side and I'm going to mirror that to the other side and it's not showing so I'm not sure why that isn't showing right now let's check our window there might be outside of my window and I can always bring that back in so I probably have two of these here now yeah I just needed to adjust my view a little bit there. Bring that in a little bit more. The next thing I need to draw is I need to show this area all being filled in with 2B crushed stone or gravel. So this one's a little bit more difficult because I'm going to have to use a lot of these same lines or draw over top of these same lines. So I'm going to do a 
annotate. I'm going to do a filled region this time. And I'm basically going to start right there. I'm going to come out about six inches. I'm going to come down here, hit escape, maybe draw a little arc. That was a line. Draw a little bit of an arc out to here. Maybe another little arc out here. I'm just trying to make this look kind of like a rough and I'm just kind of continuing that and then I'll just have it go the whole way out past here maybe up to here do an arc there and then bring it up here and then I have to go the whole way back around the inside and here I'm going to kind of fudge it so I don't have to draw inside of all those specific lines and I'll just do the same thing here where I just take it a little bit past and here I'll kind of Watch that one. And I've completed the complete region there, so I can say check mark. The only thing is, this isn't going to be concrete, so what I have to do is I have to find one that represents gravel. So, unfortunately, in Revit, they chose not to have a default hatch pattern or pattern fill pattern for gravel so what I have to do is I have to come in here I'm going to just start that from scratch again so I'm going to highlight my boundary by clicking edit boundary selecting it and then edit boundary and then I'm going to choose my filled region Right now it's concrete. So I'm going to edit type. Again, I'm going to duplicate that or duplicate that. I'm going to call it gravel so I don't change the concrete one. Then where it has fill pattern, I'm going to click a little imaginary button that isn't there, but it is there. And then I'm going to, in here, I'm going to click the button that says, not the button that says new fill pattern. I'm going to call this new fill pattern gravel. And I'm going to leave it as custom. And whenever down here under settings, I have a browse button. I'm going to click browse. And what it's looking for is an, a .pat file, which is actually an AutoCAD hatch pattern. So you can use any any AutoCAD hatch pattern in here. And why they just didn't give us the AutoCAD one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to Drafting Class T, and I'm going to go to AutoCAD and look at hatch patterns, and I'm going to choose a CAD.pat. I say open, and then that includes all the hatch patterns in AutoCAD and one of them just happens to be gravel. So I find that, I select it. I don't know how big the scale needs to be. I'm guessing it's probably too big right now, but we're going to say okay, okay, okay. And it is too big. I can see that now, it's way too big. So I'm gonna make it one quarter the size. So again, edit type. Gravel, click it, gravel. This time I'm going to edit the fill pattern. And I'm going to make this 0 0.2. I'm going to make that one fifth the size it was, about that size. I 
say okay, 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 and check that. And now it looks more like gravel. So then the next thing that we need to do, I don't want to see this line here. So I can click on this once again, edit boundary. I can hover over top that line, hit tab, and then selects, it selects that entire boundary. And instead of being a thin line, I'm going to make it an invisible line. And I say, okay. And now what I have is gravel or to be crushed stone the whole way around that. that footing, the drain, around the foundation. And the next one, I'm going to add some earth to this to show that it's earth around this. So you kind of get to see that workflow one more time. And what I'm going to do is a region again. And I'm going to choose a filled region. Be nice if I could use the lines that I already have on here. I'm just going to basically, and I'm just going to do this side for right now. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to kind of fudge this line here. I'm just going to pick a bunch of small lines like this. And that will work our whole way around. And I'll keep bringing this over to here. And I'll come back and do this as a separate one. I'll bring this the whole way out here. And this one, I'm just going to bring straight up like this. And I'm going to slope this away from the building a little bit, connect that. And then this one wants to be my earth hatch. So again, I don't see that in here. So I'll go back in here. I'll edit my type. Once again, I'll do a duplicate. I'll call this earth, say OK. And for my material, I'm going to click that. I don't have earth in here. So gravel's now in there. Just real quick, I'll look at the model ones. And there, this could be used as the, the earth hatch. And if we didn't want to use that one, it's a little bit dark, I could very easily create a new fill pattern, call this earth, make it custom, browse, go to acad.pat, and one more time, see what the problem was with that, no model type, okay, so I can't be in the model ones, so I'm going to go back to drafting, create a new one call this earth, make it custom, browse, select ACAD pat, look down through here until I find earth, select that, probably going to make this, let's try it, point 0.3, I'm just guessing, and then I'm going to take a look at it, I say okay, pattern with name already exists. So, I'm going to call it Earth Hatch. So I'm not sure why I'm getting that. I say OK. Earth Hatch. Oh, there was Earth showed up. Earth Hatch. I say OK. OK. And there is my Earth Hatch in there, which is a little bit too small. Once again, I'm going to edit type, edit that, edit it there, and I'm going to make that 0.6. So I'll make it twice the size, OK, 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 and edit the boundary, and once again, hover with my cursor, hit tab, select, change these to invisible lines. Say OK. And now what I have is some earth and some gravel represented on there. And I'll start calling those things out in the next video.